Hi guys, um, I have a special guest for you today. Um, we have Lisa Munger, and she's an Ayurvedic practitioner, and we're going to talk about staying balanced during fall and early winter, what you can do in terms of food, drinks, and certain very special Ayurvedic rituals, and um, actually some essential oils to stay grounded, happy, warm, and cold free, so no flus, no colds, um, this fall and winter. So Lisa, tell us just a little bit about yourself um, and what you do. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And hello, Nadia and Spinach and Yoga and everyone out there. Um, I've been practicing Ayurveda and I'm also a yoga teacher for about 13 years. And I came to Ayurveda in the beginning, really knowing that um, yoga and Ayurveda are considered to be sister sciences and that how they can really work together is quite profound. So I experienced Ayurveda and its effects on my own, in my own body, in my own mind before I really ever brought it to my students or to clients or anything of, of that, anything outside of myself. And how much of a... How, that shift was for me when I started really taking in food uh, according to Ayurvedic principles, structuring my life according to Ayurvedic principles, my lifestyle, and what kinds of things I was I was doing in my life. Made it, it changed my life completely, and um, and I believe much for the better. Actually, allowing me to be myself and to be comfortable in myself and to mm -hmm. do me, and um, in a way that that I thought, oh, gosh, this is amazing. I really want to share this with other people. And I, this is this is this ancient wisdom from long, a long time ago. And many of the things that we learn in Ayurveda are things that I think that are so common sense that we've maybe just forgotten in our culture, perhaps. And it, this wisdom gives us a chance to remember and to come back to things that um, will feel often quite, quite intuitive. Yeah, I totally agree with you that Ayurveda is remembering. It is listening to int your intuition. So Ayurveda does provide some guidance, but at the end it is a very empowering tool for people to just get back to that internal intuitive teacher inside who already knows what to do, how to be, what to eat. Um, so... In Ayurveda, every season has a certain personality. Yeah. And now we're in the fall. Um, and then it's going to last a little bit into the beginning of the winter. Um, and it's Vata personality. So tell us about what does that Vata personality, Vata season, stand yeah. for and what it brings on? Worse, yes. This can be one of our most challenging seasons, so this is a good time to talk about this. So, yeah, I said the whole world, so the whole shebang, the external, our, our, our bodies as um, comprised of five essential elements, fire, earth, water, air, and space. And um, our bodies microcosm of what's occurring in the external in our as we look out the window what is happening in our world okay so uh, during this time of year we have elevated vata which you mentioned and what vata is is a is a coming together of air and space so you can see this manifested in the physical world uh, I know in my part of the country I live in Iowa the, the leaves are all turning colors and many of them are very dry and they're falling to the ground and it's windy and it's cold these are vata qualities so essentially what this means is that during this time of year fall to early winter is what we call it so it's you know until that you really get um, in, in a temperate climate a lot of snow and ice mm -hmm. a, uh, and you have a lot of wind. Vats is elevated, so air and space are higher in the external. And then the effect is in the microcosm of our bodies, our mind, spirits. Those elements are also going to be aggravated, just as they because we we are in in we work in concert with nature. So we may feel in our own selves that we have more air and space as well. Particularly if you end up everybody, each person has a little different 
constellation of those elements to begin with. Mm -hmm. So particularly for people that already have some parent space that's already maybe a little higher than some of the elements in their constitution. So this can make us feel in our minds uh, just ungrounded, flighty, um, fragmented, nervous. Can anxious. Give you anxious. It can give you uh, insomnia. It can make it feel difficult to complete one task. So this is the season many times where we our multitasking goes awry. Where we come home and instead of trying, instead of you know ticking things off our list, we open a piece of mail and then we run and we look at something, you know, look at our recipe for dinner and then maybe we start the dinner, but then we see that we need to clean something. And so we're just never really settling into one thing, or it's challenging to do that. It's challenging to sit still. Yeah. You want to move more. Um, in the body, if Vata is high, you will notice cracking of joints. You will notice um, that your skin is drier, your hair is drier, your nails maybe are drier. Um, you may notice that you have constipation. Uh, and, you know, there are ailments that, that certainly go beyond just these kind of more surface things. But this is often where it begins mm -hmm. and how we begin to know. Or we might just think, oh, I'm feeling a little off this time of year. And the truth is we all kind of are. And the, the beauty about Ayurveda is that it gives us the power to, and the tools to know, well, if, if we're feeling a little air, little elevation of air and space, there are things we can do that are actually quite simple and are that act of remembering, really, um, that, and common sense that uh, allow us to come back to ourselves so that we can feel at ease, that we can bring that air and space back to the, back to the balance that it's supposed to be in. And be our most juicy, full of selves, even during this time of year. Yes. So let's talk about grounding. And according to Ayurveda, you can ground through food, through things that you drink, through herbs, um, and through routine. So mm -hmm. what are your favorite ways to ground uh, vata during this season? Yeah. Well, you know, how... Um, is what we put into our bodies, and the other half is what we're doing. So I'll address the former first. So this is the season that you want to be taking in warm, cooked foods. So raw salads, raw juice, cleansing, no. This is the time where you need to comfort yourself. And because the, the reason is, is that our, our digestion and what our digestive fire, which is called Agni in mm -hmm. Ayurveda, is, is naturally a little lower this time of year, which is why we sometimes with constipation. So our body process not that raw. So what we need to do instead to make sure that our digestion is, is functioning properly, eat some warm cooked foods. Put some ghee in your food or high quality oils like olive or grapeseed or sunflower or sesame is excellent for vata. Yeah. Guys, not the perfect time for coconut oil now. Coconut oil is cooling, so we don't, yeah, we can set that until, until summer. <laughs> table that one for summer. And to be eating foods that are, that have more, that are more spiced. We kind of don't, in the West, we've lost a little bit of our, beyond salt and pepper, our, our repertoire. Yeah. So we're talking about spice, spices and spice mixes or masalas that we can make ourselves that, uh, that will help us to be, to be able to digest our food. So it's warming spices. Um, and then the other half, the latter half of that, of that equation with our beta of, of our routine. So what is perhaps the most essential thing for grounding ourselves in the season is to make sure we have a routine. And that can be quite difficult. Sometimes I will sit down with clients and just go through their day. And this I know this can sound simple, but we don't really do it otherwise. So stop. Write down a list of what you have to do in your day. And maybe something, maybe you're doing something a little different every day, but, but see if you can establish for yourself some sort of regular schedule so that you're eating at the same times, you know, every day. You're going to bed at the same time every day, waking up at the same time, and um, provide yourself the space to unwind every day because we can, that, you know, 
that air, extra air and space in the atmosphere. It's like if you imagine, you know, you may kind of go to the expression of like an airhead, somebody who kind of doesn't really know what's going on. Um, it can make us all a little airhead, airhead like, you know, that we don't, we kind of lose, lose it a little bit. So yeah. write out a routine for yourself. Make sure you know what you're doing, and um, and that you are trying to stay. Um, Try to stay and apply a focus for yourself. And then finally, I want to mention Abhyanga because I think that that's an, it's, it's self-oil massage and it's such a beautiful healing practice year-round. But in this season, you know, I think that truly it can bring you back to yourself, bring you out of that air and space, perhaps like nothing else. And what, it, what, what, what you would do, and um, I know that there's, I have a link to it on my website and, and perhaps we can. Yeah, um, we can definitely share it. Essentially, it's very simple, but um, you would take sesame oil, and organic sesame oil, and, and warm it uh, slightly. It heats up really fast, so be careful. And then uh, about a half cup, and take it, and I usually just take my pot and put it next on a coaster, or, or not a coaster, a uh, pot pad. Mm -hmm. Next up, lay out a, a towel on my tub, and pour the oil all over myself, and then begin to mas massage in a clockwise fashion from your extremities all the way into your heart and then your belly ending there so that you and letting that oil sink in and if you can take a bath a warm bath afterwards fantastic and let it sink in a little bit so we're feeding ourselves both internally by taking in ghee and other oils and by doing abhyanga or applying oils even some oil like some sesame oil to the bottoms of your feet before you go yes. to bed even if you don't have time to heat it you know, we 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 get busy, but do a little doing a little something is better than nothing, even if it's not ideal. Yeah, um, I've been doing uh, abhyanga for the last two years, and it is such an incredible ritual to just slow down to relieve stress, and it can be a part of the routine that you mentioned. That's so important for vata types because if you know that your day is erratic, you do everything different every day, different meetings, different schedule, what you can do is have your self-care practices as a part of the routine. So, for example, you wake up at the same time, you make yourself breakfast. That's your routine. And then maybe lunch is going to be a little bit different every day, but when you come home, a part of your routine can be a pyanga. Um, whether you have time to take a bath afterwards or maybe not, just putting that oil on your feet, maybe some major joints and your neck, the areas where you do tend to carry stress, like your shoulders, your neck, can be an incredible part of that grounding routine that's so important for lot of types. Yep, exactly. You just do the best you can. Yes. Uh, before we talk a little bit more about massage and um, using essential oils, you mentioned that you can use some warming spices. So I just wanted to clarify for all spinach and yoga readers what are those uh warming spices are so maybe you can share a few spices that we can use for um maybe soups and grain based dishes and some that we can use to make our own herbal teas so things that are more savory which i'll start with first that yeah. you might you know just be more regularly adding to your food um it can, it can certainly be ginger grated or powder, either way. Um, it can be garlic. Um, you know, I prefer to use the, the, actual, the actual ginger, the actual garlic, as opposed to the powder. But, you know, what, it's better to do that, the powder, than nothing. Um, it can be cumin, which you can use either in seed form or, again, in powder. And truly, and that's one of the common ones that you can use in anything, and then black pepper is helpful. This is the season where it is helpful. If you can put in such a way that it's not already ground, it'll be more potent for you. Or mm -hmm. you can use a grinder yourself or, you know, for each a little individual size or grind a bunch of it. I will sometimes use either a sorbachi or my coffee grinder when I am in a bind. Just make sure that you, that you wash them out so you're not drinking peppery coffee in the morning. But... Most all spices are going to be um, are going to be nice for vata. You know things even like basil and oregano that you may mm -hmm. already have. Again, you might if you haven't tried it before, you might you might see about um, 
buying spices in bulk as opposed to in the little plastic um, jar or little plastic containers because the quality can be really profoundly different. Even with something like black pepper that um, becomes much less therapeutic and, and medicinal truly when we are buying something that is sitting on a shelf for a long time. So go to your... Um, Go to your natural food store and see if you can buy little bits of the spices that you want in um, in bulk. And not meaning not that you have to buy a ton of it, but you can actually buy a small amount mm -hmm. and use it maybe, you know, one, you, using those uh, week by week or even buying them once a month is, is better than buying them in, in those large amounts. Yeah, so and I think yeah. another, I just wanted to mention, guys, if you have an Indian store in your area... Um, they usually have really good fresh spices. True. And any sort of, um, you know, many times in, in that kind of a store, you might see pre-made masalas yes. and stuff like that. And those masala just means mix. So most of them are going to be really nice. I mean, our cooling spices are things like fat, um, and that they have that, that she tastes that those are going to be more of the your summer type thing, but truly most spices are going to be excellent for vata. And then in terms of teas, I think that a non-caffeinated chai is something that uh, that is just so it's it's delicious first, and it is uh, also quite balancing for vata. So what I do to make it is I would just take a pot, a soup pot, or you know a, just a regular um, pot that you have. Mm -hmm. and half with water and then I would put um, cardamom pods the green cardamom pods uh, sticks of cinnamon um, you could do some uh, some star anise the yeah. actual little or the seed the little seeds are fine too uh, cloves and then ginger either in powder or hopefully the uh, just just chunk off you know mm -hmm. a chunk of ginger because you're gonna strain this and then bring that to a rolling to a rolling boil and keep it there at the boil until it really is starting to um, get dark and become, it almost looks like it's a little, like like it looks a little syrupy. Um, and then I and then I add whole milk to that and pour enough in until it is looking now very creamy. And then boil it a little bit in the while. And, uh, that provides that's something that I would sip all day. If you're not a milk person, a cow's milk person, you could also do like an almond milk would be would be okay as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so talking about other routine things that you can do, um, you mentioned that you can do some massage and you can take some essential oils. Um, and I think another thing that would be really good is. To add some essential oils to the bath if you're taking it after apyanga and yep. what right. I heard is that you started um, a line of essential oils and some skincare products that is Ayurvedic and natural and based on those amazing ancient recipes so um, tell us a little bit about that and guys I have some stuff to show you Lisa was kind enough to ship me some stuff and what I have in my hands is uh, all vata balancing. So everything for this season is a vata spritz. So there it is. Um, and then I have a vata essence, which is also relaxing. And then I have vata grounding oil. This one I took on the plane. Uh, when I was flying to Russia this past week, and it was good. So for all the holiday travels that's coming up, that would be really good. And another thing that I have, um, which is a scrub, it has ginger and jasmine and sugar. Um, it says, let yourself glow. Yes. And it smells amazing. Um, so, Lisa, tell us a little bit about how somebody can use essential oils to balance in the fall and a little bit about your line, what's special about it and why, why you decided to create it. There's so many different essential oils. Why 
why did you want to create your own? Well, um, the line the the line is called Breathe Deep Naturals, and it began. Um, Lisa, a woman named a friend of mine, Lisi Staub, um, works out of her home in a small town in Missouri. And I saw her doing her work and making the scrubs and making some oils over the years that I was that I've been teaching yoga and that we would carry it in various uh, studios where I worked. And I use what she had, the you know, she has sprays, all kinds of things with with clients, with yoga clients, mm -hmm. uh, with Ayurveda clients. And I you just knowing Ayurveda, be able to kind of pick through the different variations, like you saw the jasmine scrub, to know slightly heating, and that would be good at this time of year. Mm -hmm. and the conversation, Lisi and I were talking about um, making something that was more explicitly Ayurvedic, that would say to the person who doesn't necessarily know which which qualities to pick out, this is for Vata, this is for, you know, and so, and so we worked in consultation to come up with those, with the Ayurvedic line of things that will be specific and, and much more easier to discern. I have, there is, there, um, any line out there that I thought and any other, um, practice like this particular one with, with this, with Lisi that I thought was, was worthy of putting so much, um, of putting time and putting so much time and care into. She does a beautiful job of making sure that everything is sustainably sourced, that it's organic, that it is affordable. Um, yeah, and, and it is affordable. It is really uh, accessible. It's important to me that, that Ayurveda, that people know that Ayurveda is accessible for, and Ayurvedic practices for everyone. And, it, um, and I hadn't seen that kind of quality that she offers at the, at the price point. So uh, I think because she, because of the nature of her operation, doing it out of her home as a small business, that she's able to provide that, which is really lovely. So so this is how we came together in coming up with particularly um, some of the products that you showed, the the, the, the Vata products uh, for that we're, that we're talking about today, a little bit more specifically, which are great for fall because they, they do, just like, the teas or the food spices, they include, it includes the oil, um, includes uh, oils from plants that are going to have a little bit spicier, grounding, um, heating, energetic to it, uh, that will, that just by applying it, you know, you mentioned when you were traveling, because mm -hmm. of course it's, it's vata aggravating, because it messes with our routine, and literally when you're on a plane that's dry, your air and space is, is certainly affected, and, and um, so um, taking that, that's having that smell, and taking that onto your skin, you know, our skin is our, our, is our largest organ, and it's very important that what we're putting on our skin, just as we're careful about what we put in our bodies, that we're not putting a bunch of toxic stuff, complicated chemical stuff on our skin. And that's what I love about these these products is that you can read the ingredients and you know what everything is, yeah. and that you know that what what you're putting onto your skin and on your skin and then what is then being absorbed and turned into your body is clear and is going to increase your prana and increase your vital force, your ojas, your life sap, and not deplete it. That your body's not going to have to work against whatever that toxin is to to weed that out, that this is actually going to work with your natural, um, your natural processes of your body. Yeah, and I also know just in myself that there are different ways um, to balance vata. Like we spoke with Lisa about food, we spoke about spices, um, that self-massage. All of those things are wonderful when you have time and access to do that. Um, when you're at work or when you're traveling, when you're away from your kitchen, um, when you do need that balancing and um, you might feel that, well, I feel stressed out after that meeting, um, so what's your natural thing? The response is for your body to crave some grounding. It can crave the grounding through you going to the office kitchen and grabbing a chocolate or a cookie or something else that will create that grounding, but will also have lots of negative side effects. You'll feel um, heavy, your digestion will be overloaded. But another wonderful 
option to ground is to ground through emotions, to ground through smells, through uh, maybe meditation, through breathing. And that's when a tiny small bottle of an essential oil comes in so, so handy because if you have it at your desk, if you have it in your purse, um, you can get those effects right away without spending time at the kitchen. So yes, food is incredibly important. Your routine is incredibly important. If you can put oil, some oil on your feet before sleep, it will be great. But if you have another thing to help you stay balanced, always at your side, always in your purse, it's just an incredible tool to have. So the same way as you carry around a bag of almonds or a nutrition bar, I would carry um, an essential oil. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I will, uh, I, I, I carry them in my purse as well. Yeah. Um, the vata pitta, because I'm a pitta vata girl. And, you know, so if I am taking, for example, like a hot glass, I will take that pitta and just like, oh, spritz myself. Or if I'm like in traffic and, and it's making me irritated, pitta. Or yeah. um, the vata. I would put on. I put it on every day, like perf- like 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 a person would perfume, and um, and it I does would, smell good. It smells really good, and I'll use that relax um, balm that you showed before I go to bed um, every day. I just keep it on my nightstand because we really do. Um, aroma allows us to be able to sink in and to heal on a level that is beyond the level of thought. So this is the same kind of thing that when you walk into a space for maybe from your childhood that you don't know what it, what it is exactly, but there's a certain smell to it. Maybe it's your church or maybe it's your parents' house or whatever, that it triggers something that's beyond what you can really parse out with your mind. This is the same way that aroma can work to heal in Ayurveda, that um, with the way that these the way that smell works and the way that aroma works, even with the body scrub that you showed, um, that it can give us a feeling of truly of being able to, with Fata, ground down, come back down to earth, plant your feet on the ground. Yeah. In a way, and in a way that, that perhaps you can't access necessarily as easily during your, during your day. If you don't, you know, that you can put on the oil and you can, you know, make sure that you smell it and really take like at least a good three deep inhale and exhale, letting it come into your brain, letting it, letting that, whatever that um, smell triggers for you uh, and to permeate your being truly. Yeah. It make a big difference. It sounds so simple, but it's, um, we do a lot of complicated things trying to help ourselves to ground and to calm down. And this is something that is, and so we overlook the simple. Um, but this is one of those things that is quite simple and, and, you know, I think it's, it's worth, it's worth a shot. Yeah. I I agree with you that the most powerful things are usually the most simple, fortunately for us. So you better take advantage of that. I will definitely post, um, a link to, uh, Lisa's line underneath the video. So guys, check it out. Um, it's totally affordable. Um, and it is amazing. I love it. So thank you, Lisa, for creating it. And thank you for sharing your Ayurvedic wisdom with us today. Oh, thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Spinach Yoga. Thanks.